Hello. Welcome to my George. Thank you for joining me today. We have a super, super, super fun project. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a really cool bag. It's the Retro Sling by Can Do Crafts, and I really loved it. I took it with me on vacation, and I was over the moon about it. And I pretty much knew right away that I was going to make the Retro Tech, which is Can Do Crafts, um, I guess, neck size up very similar to the retro sling, but big enough to carry a laptop. I, I wanted a very similar bag to what I was already carrying, but that was just a little bit roomier. And I think it's gonna fit the bill um, quite well. So that's what we're gonna do. We're making the retro tech bag by Can Do Crafts. They were very, very generous and kind to allow me to shoot this tutorial for them. So. Thank you for joining me. I hope we have so much fun. Um, first thing I want you to do is take a few minutes after you've purchased the pattern and I want you to actually read through the complete tutorial. I think it's a good idea. I've read through it a couple of times um, and it's a big bag. There's a, there's a lot of options. Um, you can do no pockets. You can do all the pockets. Um, there's an option for a phone case. You can do backpack straps or a sling option. So um, it's going to be one of those things you want to read through first. I am actually going to do all the pockets except for the front panel pocket. And I'm going to do the sling option, not the backpack option. I am also not doing the phone case. All right, here we go. Thank you for joining me again. All right, let's get started. Okay, we're going to talk about fabric and interfacing or stabilizer options. So I love waxed canvas and I made myself um, a DIY, DIY wax canvas. Um, I just bought some regular duck canvas and made my own wax canvas for this particular bag. And so I wanted to talk about options. I think that it's going to be important to use a heavier style of fabric, some sort of canvas, um, potentially denim, possibly even cork or vinyl if you have the a machine that can actually handle that. That would be a good option for your exterior pieces. There is a, um, options for stabilizer or interfacing, I do believe that that really is going to depend on what you decide to use for um, your exterior fabric pieces. I am using a Fabric Therapies Lofty Fleece. It's a self-adhesive fleece um, and it actually is going to be just exactly what I need on the wax canvas, I feel. I am not going to use Lofty Fleece on every single exterior piece, but we'll talk about that more later. So I've used about a total of three yards of fabric, one and a half yards for the lining, one and a half yards for the exterior. It's approximate. So yeah, these are the actual pieces that I have chosen to use the self-adhesive Lofty Fleece from Fabric Therapy. I'm going to use it on the gusset, the back panel, the upper front panel, and the inner front panel. And you'll notice on all the pieces that there is a dotted line and I have cut the lofty fleece on that that line right there so it's gonna look something like this and I haven't actually put them on yet so it's gonna fit like let me put it on here and then show you so it's going to be, it's going to fuse on like that. Well, not fuse, but it's a self-adhesive. And it's going to give you room for your seam allowance. So just keep that in mind whenever you go to add, if you're using foam or any type of stabilizer interfacing, you don't want to have too much in your seam allowance. And uh, that's important because you're going to be adding binding later. So you want to make sure you keep the seams as narrow as possible. 
So once you've read through the tutorial, you'll probably have a pretty good idea of what style of bag that you would like to make. As you know, I'm doing the sling style. If you're going to choose to do the backpack style, that part will not be on this tutorial, maybe in a future tutorial, but not on this particular tutorial. I would take a moment and just jot down notes about exactly what you want and just review page three in the tutorial. That is a cut list, but something I wanted to show you, and this is what I used on every single pattern piece it tells you it exactly tells you exactly what you, what you need right here so you could go ahead and pick all your pieces and get them ready then you can um, start cutting out your fabrics based on what these say because that's how I did it and it worked perfectly for me another thing to keep in mind is they have added labels in their pattern um, in the tutorial or at the end of the tutorial it's actually little pattern labels and you can actually print that out and have them attached to your pieces so you don't really get anything mixed up. All right, this is a paper, let's go ahead and pause it. Hopefully you can see it all the way. These are all my pattern pieces. And the ones that have the asterisk on the side is actually the pieces that I am interfacing with Lofty Fleece. All right, if you've made it this far, then let's talk about hardware and some extras. So I am going to be putting three zippers and I'm omitting the zipper that goes on the front panel, the outer front panel, because it's an actual quilt block and I don't want to disrupt the flow of that, but I will be doing three other zippers I already have the zipper pulls. I'm using a number five zipper tape. Some pretty cute zipper pulls. It's one zipper that actually zips up the bag will zip up like that from each side. So it has two zipper pulls. And this is the zipper tape I'm going with. All right, doing what I'm doing, you're gonna need two of these. And these are called swivel clips and these are two in two inch I believe two inch swivel clips and of course you're gonna need a slider okay you're gonna need four D rings I'm using one inch D rings okay that's my choice I think you can use bigger or smaller if you choose so the more sturdier ones like these are the two that will actually go like this would be the strap and it's going to go here and, and here. then these two the smaller ones are less sturdy I guess are for the side connectors and that's okay. really it for your hardware and then of course you're going to need yeah you gotta have some webbing Okay, so I've got, this is the webbing for the sling. And then I also have some one inch webbing and this is for when I'm actually attaching my D-rings, okay? Take a minute and go ahead and decide what you're gonna do. Go ahead and cut out your fabric, your exterior interior, go ahead and pick your hardware, get it all set up. Um, if you're gonna interface, it's time to do that now with whatever stabilizer or interfacing that you choose to do and go ahead and attach it. All right, there also is a carry handle that is attached to the sling and I'm definitely adding this. If I'm not using a leather strap, I'm gonna use some of this webbing. I just wanted to make sure that you knew about that. And also don't forget that there is binding for this bag and I'm gonna use the duck canvas for my binding but I just wanted to give you a heads up so that you understand. I think there's like, I think three yards. So just go ahead and prep that in advance so that you'll have it ready.
time to get started, but I want to make sure you have a few of your favorite things before we get started. I can't live without my Wonder Clips, so let's make sure you have those. I always have the ruler, the lighter, friction pen. I keep a glue stick on hand just in case. This is just my preference, but I also use a double-sided uh, sticky tape. And I use this on my zipper for sure, and it's a, it's very thin. It's less than a quarter inch. So I got that from Wizardry Stitchery. My favorite scissors, these are spring-loaded. And then I need these big boys, just in case, because you never know. Um, I'm going to use my hemostats, and I'm going to use this to pull, like, uh, my strap through. So this is a must. And then, of course, you know, I can't live without this. And this is my stiletto, and I love it. It's probably my favorite tool in the sewing room. You'll also want to make sure that your needle is correct. I'm using a 9014 on my Husqvarna tote bags. There's, oh, and don't forget tags. If you want a tag on your bag, don't forget your tags. These came from Heartwood and Hyde. Love them. They're awesome. Yeah. So make sure you have your favorite things and your sewing machine ready to run. I want to note one thing. When you are interfacing or stabilizing this piece, which is piece number A, it's the back panel. You want to make sure that if you're using foam or anything that's um, a thicker type stabilizer to have this part cut out. And it actually shows that on the pattern piece. I'll show you. You'll see it right here. Make sure that is cut out, okay? It'll just make it easier when you go to actually add your pocket. Right. There are marks on your pattern pieces like this. Please remember to mark your pattern pieces. Like even on the upper front panel, this center mark, there and there. Your gusset seam marks also need to be marked. This is important. Go ahead and mark them ahead of time. Okay? Don't forget. Let's go ahead and get the easiest part of the bag out of the way. Here I have four pieces of one inch webbing, two inches long, and four D-rings. Insert the one inch webbing into the D-ring and clip in place. Repeat with the remaining three D-rings. Now you'll sew three eighths inch away from the edge to secure in place. Take two of your D-rings and set to the side. Take one side connector piece, pattern piece in, and press the long straight edge 1 fourth inch to the wrong side. Take one D-ring tab and place it on top with its left side aligned with the center at the top edge. Put the connector piece into over the ring tab to form a right angle triangle, then clip to hold. Make sure you use your zipper foot for this part. With a 1 8 inch seam allowance, start at the folded side and sew along the top and then down the raw edge. Set your side connectors to the side. Grab your webbing, slider, and your swivel hooks. You will also need two strap connector pieces and two shoulder strap pieces. 
Here I have finished the edge of my strap with a zigzag stitch to keep the fraying at bay. Take your webbing piece and loop it into the slider over the middle piece and down back through. Stitch in place with a rectangle. Lay your strap right side down. Now feed your webbing up through the swivel hook. Now feed the webbing into the slider, back over the middle of the slider, and back through. Now the slider should be able to move comfortably. Take the raw edge of your webbing and center it on the shoulder strap on the curved edge. Double check to make sure it is exactly in the center. The webbing will be sandwiched in between the two shoulder straps and the shoulder straps should be right sides together. Pin or clip in place. Trim your seam allowance down to one fourth of an inch and clip around your corners. Be careful not to clip into the stitch line. This part can be a little bit tricky depending upon how heavy a fabric you are using. Reach into the shoulder strap, grab the webbing, and start pulling the webbing through the shoulder strap. If you are using vinyl or waxed canvas, you can use a blow dryer to warm it up a bit. You can see here that I'm using my hemostats to poke out the round edges and to smooth out the seams. Once you have it all nice and smooth and flat, you'll need to take it to your sewing machine and top stitch 1 8 of an inch all around the edge. Take one of your prepped D-rings, place it in the center of the raw edge of your prepared shoulder strap. Sew to attach with a 1 4 inch seam allowance. Now add the strap connectors. Take both strap connector pieces and place them right sides together. Align the edges and clip together. Then use a 3 8 inch seam allowance and stitch down the angled side edges, leaving the top and bottom edges open. Next, take the shoulder strap and insert the raw end with D-ring attached into the wider end of the connector. You should be able to see the raw edge of the shoulder strap at the top. It should be a perfect fit. Align the edges, clip in place, and sew a 3 h inch seam allowance. After stitching, snip away the seam allowance at a 45 degree angle at both ends of the seams. Turn the connector right side out by grabbing and pulling the strap. Poke your corners out and top stitch 1 8 of an inch along the outside border. Add your third D-ring and your grab handle. Trim the ends of your grab handle at a 45 degree angle on each side. Align your D-ring and your grab handle along the raw edge of your strap connector. Make sure the D-ring is centered. Center the grab handle on either side of the D-ring. Stitch all in place at 1 4 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and set completed strap to the side out of the way. Now let's add our pocket to the back panel. You should have pattern piece B, two pocket pieces, one back panel, one zipper, one zipper pull. Place pattern piece B on the wrong side of one of your pocket pieces. Trace your zipper placement box with a fabric friendly pin. On the right side of the back panel, position pocket piece right side down three quarters of an inch from the side edge and one and three quarter inches from the bottom. Secure your pocket piece by taping it to the back panel. Stitch all along the zipper box line. Cut down the center of your zipper box that you just stitched. Cut a Y at each corner, careful not to cut into the stitching. Go ahead and remove the tape that is holding down your pocket piece. Push your pocket piece through the opening of your zipper to the up opposite side. You can use tape to secure it in place. Seal each end of your zipper tape with a flame 
and add your zipper pull to your zipper tape. If you're struggling here, I have a YouTube tutorial showing you how to do this. I like to add double-sided sticky tape to the edge of the right side of the zipper tape so that I can make sure it doesn't move while I'm stitching it in place. Once you have the double-sided sticky tape on the coil side of your zipper tape, place your zipper tape inside the zipper box, coil side towards the lining. Position your zipper pull at the top or the bottom depending on your preference. Reposition until it is perfectly centered. Add the sewing machine, stitch in place with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Be careful of your zipper pull. Check to make sure your zipper works. Remove your tape from your pocket piece and trim the ends of your zipper. Take the second pocket piece and lay it right sides together on the first pocket piece. Clip in place and stitch with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Be careful not to sew the pocket to the back panel. There are reference marks on pattern piece A, which is your back panel piece. They are labeled top stitch line. Transfer these reference marks onto your back panel piece. Before stitching on the reference lines, please make sure your pocket piece is flat against the back panel. Stitch in place to secure. Now your pocket is nice and secure. Oh, look at those vans. Okay, go ahead and grab your completed strap. Find the center on your strap and also on the back panel. Clip in place. Stitch across the connector 3 8 inch from the raw edge. I've used an elastic to fold the strap up and secure it in place. On pattern piece A, the back panel pattern piece, there are reference marks for your strap side connectors. Transfer reference marks to your back panel. Your D-ring should be pointing up and towards the middle of the back panel. Stitch in place with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Trim lower edge of connectors flush with the curved raw edge of the panel. For the laptop pocket, you should have two pocket pieces and a piece of binding. Place pocket pieces right sides together. Stitch with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and turn your pocket inside out. Top stitch along the seams. I'm using a piece of twill tape for the binding here, so basically I'm just folding it in half over the top edge before I stitch it in place. Waterproof canvas or wax canvas is a good alternative for binding as well. This is about the time that I realized I think I had messed up. The binding should have been attached to one of the finished edges. Always making mistakes. After some thought, I decided to use the pocket anyway and to just do a zigzag stitch along the bottom edge. To help you understand a little bit better, when you're looking at the pockets, the stripes should have been horizontal and not vertical. Okie dokie, moving right along. Let's go ahead and remove any excess binding. Pin your pocket in place about one inch from the bottom edge. Stitch down both side edges using a 1 4 inch seam allowance. I chose not to use foam in my laptop pocket, but I'm still going to add a couple of pleats at the bottom. I've measured one inch on each side and I've made a little crease. You can pin them in place. I actually used scotch tape. Once I made both little tucks, I took it to the sewing machine and I stitched it in place. Don't forget to remove your scotch tape when you're all done if you've used it. Now it's time to add the back panel lining fabric to the back panel exterior fabric. Place the two wrong sides together. Pin or clip in place 
and sew with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Set completed back panel aside. I added a pocket to the inner front panel lining fabric. It is constructed just like the pocket that is on the back panel. So here's a fun little time lapse of the construction of the inner front panel pocket. You should have one more zipper pocket lining piece, pattern piece B. We will use this to make the optional pin pocket. Press one side edge 1 fourth inch to the wrong side. Fold the piece in two widthwise and clip the raw edges together. Stitch across the top and down the side using a 1 fourth inch seam allowance. Trim the corners at a 45 degree angle. Be careful not to cut into the stitch line. Turn your pocket inside out. Poke out your corners and press well. Top stitch along one of your long edges. Use your fabric marking pin of choice. Mark your measurements per your pattern's instructions. The optional pin pocket will be placed on the inner front lining panel underneath the zipper pocket. It's very important to note you need to move the zipper pocket out of the way before attaching the optional pin pocket. Center and stitch into place, taking care to follow the marked pocket division lines on the front of the piece. OMG, look how cute. Now it's time to add the inner front panel lining fabric with the inner front panel exterior fabric. Place both pieces wrong sides together, pin or clip in place, matching your center markings. Stitch in place with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Go ahead and set your inner front panel aside for now. You will need a small piece of webbing and a swivel hook, along with your exterior and lining outer front panel pieces. Just remember, I have omitted the pocket for this front panel. At the bottom of pattern piece D, outer front panel pattern piece, transfer the dart positions from outer front panel base template to the wrong side of the fabric. Fold your dart in half, Stitch on the drawn lines. The fabric should be right sides together. Stitch in place. Do this for both the exterior and the lining. Take your two inch piece of webbing, slide it into the swivel hook. Because we have omitted the pocket, we will need to remove a portion of the top of the outer panel. I removed one inch from the top and also removed an extra 3 8 inch off of the stabilizer to reduce bulk in the seam allowance. Remember to remove the same 1 inch from the lining piece of fabric as well. Now that we've made that adjustment, we can go ahead and attach our swivel clip. Place your swivel hook in the center of the outer front 
panel exterior. Pin or clip in place. Add your outer front panel lining right sides together to your outer front panel exterior, sandwiching your swivel clip in between. Align the edges and clip together down both curved side edges and across the top edge only, leaving the lower section unclipped. Sew the curved edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Clip away the seam allowance at both of the top corners at a 45 degree angle to reduce bulk. Clip into the seam allowance at a right angle to the stitch line along both curved edges at 3 fourths inch intervals. Reach inside, grab the swivel hook, and pull the whole piece right side out. Poke out your corners, press well, and top stitch at 1 8 inch seam allowance. Pin or clip in place the outer front panel lining to the outer front panel exterior. Sew with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. Make sure to smooth out any puckers. With the inner front panel laid flat, right side facing up, take the outer front panel and place it on top, also right side facing up. Align both pieces at the midpoints on the bottom edge and clip together. Then align along the bottom edge around the curved corners and up the side edges, paying particular attention to the curved bottom corners, then clip together. Note the outer panel is wider than the inner to create space inside the pocket, so align the edges carefully. Use a 1 4th inch seam allowance to stitch the two panels together. It should look something just like this. We're getting close. Oh, it's right around the corner. All right, it's time to get to the fun part, the big zipper. You'll be using your longest zipper with two zipper pulls, your upper front panel lining and exterior. Start by sealing the edges of your zipper tape. Attach a zipper pull to both ends of your zipper tape. The zipper pulls will need to be facing each other. Stitch the ends of the zipper tape across the coils so your zipper pulls do not fall off. Take the exterior upper front panel and lay it flat, right side facing up and upside down so the curved inner edge is at the top. Take the zipper and open it. Center it on top of the panel, wrong side facing up. Pin or clip the zipper tape all along the curved edge of the panel, taking care to align the edges precisely as you clip. As I was aligning the zipper tape on the curved edge, I did make some snips into the zipper tape. Slowly attach your zipper with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. I use my handy dandy stiletto to keep the zipper tape in line while I'm sewing. Now let's add the upper front panel lining. With the piece laid flat, right side facing up, take the upper front panel lining and lay it on top, wrong side facing up, so both pieces are right sides together, and upside down with an inner curved edge at the top. Align both pieces at the short side edges and along the inner curved edge where the zipper is stitched. Start clipping or pinning the lining to the panel along the zipper seam. Clips are your friend. The zipper should be sandwiched between the lining and the outer panel. With your trusty stiletto, stitch your lining in place using a 1 4th inch seam allowance.
This may take a little while, but you'll need to get some sharp scissors and clip into the seam allowance at a regular 3 4 intervals. Be careful not to clip into the stitches. Flip the lining over. You want your panel and lining to be wrong sides together. Pull your zipper away from the seam. If you're not using vinyl or wax canvas, press carefully to achieve a nice smooth curve. Top stitch along the zipper seam with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Pin or clip your lining to your exterior. Stitch them together with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Check your zipper pulls to make sure they're working correctly. Now let's add a gusset. With the upper front panel laid flat, right side facing up and upside down, take the gusset and lay it on top, wrong side facing up. Both pieces are right sides together. Align the short edges of both pieces beginning at the inner zipper side, then clip together. Stitch both seams at 3 8 inch of seam allowance. To attach the gusset lining, Lay the piece flat with the gusset underneath and the upper front panel on top, lining side facing up. Take the gusset lining piece and place it on top, wrong side facing up, so both panel and gusset linings are right sides together. Align the short edges of the gusset and gusset lining and clip together. The upper front panel is now sandwiched between the gusset and the gusset lining. Stitch both seams using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Trim the ends of the seam allowance at a 45 degree angle on both seams. Pull the upper front panel away from the gusset. Arrange so the gusset and gusset lining are wrong sides together. Top stitch at the gusset seam at 1 8 inch seam allowance. Clip in place the gusset and the gusset lining. Repeat on the opposite side. Be careful not to create any puckers. You may need to trim where the gusset lines up with the zipper to make sure it's even. Sew along the raw edge of the gusset at a 1 4th inch seam allowance. You should end up with a piece that looks like this. Now it's time to join the front and center sections. Take the gusset piece and place it on a flat surface with the lining side facing out. Take the front section and place it at the center wrong side, lining side facing up. Align the edges at the marked points on the top, bottom, and side edges. Then clip right sides together at these points. Use as many clips as you can to avoid any puckers. At the gusset corners, feel free to make some snips in order for it to fit nice and snug. Ooh, yeah, I used my whole clip arsenal. Your front panel should be laying flat on your sewing machine bed before you start stitching. The gusset should be pointing towards you. Stitch at a 3 8 inch seam allowance around the bottom edge. Switching to a 1 4 inch seam allowance when going around the zipper.
Make sure you turn the piece over and check your seam on the right side, particularly at the bottom corners. If you're not happy with any section or there are any puckers in the fabric, rip out that section of the seam and try again. Now let's bind the seam. I am using one inch twill tape for this section. I like that the edges don't unravel and it's very sturdy. I usually begin at the bottom center. It's as simple as folding your binding in half over the seam. Clip your binding in place as you go along. Stitch your binding in place at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. At this point, I like to double check that I've caught the binding on both sides all around the edge. Double check to make sure your zipper is working properly and tuck in your handle inside your front pocket. Go ahead and unzip your main zipper. Now let's finish this bag up. Let's attach the back panel. Triple check to make sure your zipper is open. Lay the back panel flat, right side facing up, with the strap neatly folded at the center away from the edges. Take the completed front center section and lay it on top, wrong sides facing up, so both pieces are right sides together. Align the mark points of both pieces at the top, bottom, and side edges, clipped together. Continue clipping both pieces together all around the perimeter. Before clipping the curved base corners, clip into the seam allowance no more than 1 fourth inch at regular 1 half intervals to help ease the straight edge of the gusset against the curved edges of the back panel. Remember all those clips you used for the front panel seam? Well, you're going to need to use a lot more for this one. This is kind of where I thought I might not have enough clips for this bag. It's okay to take your time on this section. You really want to make sure that the cusset is perfectly fitting into the corners. Man, I really wish that I could move that fast. That would be crazy funny. You're going to want your back panel to be laying flat while you're stitching this time. Use a 3 8 inch seam allowance as you go along the edge. Go ahead and use your stiletto to make sure that all of your pieces stay together. Before we do the final step, which is the binding on the very back panel, we're going to double check all of our seams, make sure there's no puckering that we might need to fix. It seemed to be a little bit easier for me to run my hand along the inside seam to make sure there weren't any puckers. For binding, this time I'm going to use what I have left over for my twill tape. And then for the last little bit, I'm going to use wax canvas. I'm going to bind this seam just like I binded the front panel seam. Yep, I said binded. Um, I probably should have said bound. All right, let's get this finished up. It's way past my bedtime. What do you think guys? We haven't even turned her out and I think she's beautiful. Go ahead and double check and make sure the binding is caught on both sides of your seam. Trim the edges of the binding at the top and let's go ahead and double check on the inside and make sure that we don't have any puckers. Once everything's good to go, it's time to turn this booger out. I hope you got some muscles. I'm fine.
my lead pen. Look at her. She's so pretty. And she's big. Like, hold a laptop big. And lots of books. If I was in school, this would be perfect. But you know what? I'm gonna switch over and make this my everyday bag for about a week and see how it feels. Because I'm curious. But she's so pretty. I love the way it's pleated right here. So this is like, this pocket is real, really super roomy. Bam. Look at the inside. All right, first let's do this. We're on it. Unclip it. And you want you to see all this space. All right, so this unclips all kinds of space in here. And you open it up. And here's this pocket here. And then. There's a pocket for your cell phone. Some, I can't really see how many pockets in there. Put your pins in this pocket. Ooh! Man, can't wait to try it out. Yeah, and it wasn't bad except for the mistake I made because I didn't read the, I wasn't reading the instructions and it, that's my fault, honestly. I mean, I should read the, I should read the instructions. Wow. Didn't she turn out so good? I do have to say, I'm glad that she's finished. Now I can actually uh, carry her around. Um, she's got a ton of room. Like I, I was like really, like I knew she was going to be bigger, but she really has a lot of room like this would be a good quality backpack for even a teenager um the actual style is great and it feels great when it's on so i'm i'm impressed and uh yeah um i did make some mistakes along the way and you know what we're learning together hopefully <laughs> and i didn't actually do the tutorial in this same order as uh, Can Do Crafts written tutorial, so hopefully that'll be okay. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you for you. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and uh, I hope we get to see each other again soon. And uh, yeah, goodbye from Bye George.